I'm breaking all my rules and I'm going to show you immodestly one of my own wins. And this has a relation to these bong cloud king walks. This one's not in the opening, but it comes later on in the game after a tense middle game. So watch out for that. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And do consider supporting us on Patreon or PayPal. Links down there. So here we go. I was playing white and I faced Andrei Sokolov, uh, a Russian uh, who, well, now lives in France, but, well, at his peak, he was actually a candidate for the world title. Um, so this was quite a thrill playing, playing against him. This was played in the Swiss Team Championship in 2000. So I've played a closed Sicilian. Now, this is a popular system at club level. Top levels, not so many players go for it. Spassky was one. Um, I'd studied this quite a bit, and I'd worked out some tricky systems. And this move, which doesn't appear to be the most ambitious, was one of my little systems that I like to use. There's more to this than meets the eye. So pawn to e5 from Sokolov, that's one of the main moves along with e6. And now here's my idea, pawn to h4. So this provokes a response from black. Black doesn't want to allow the pawn to advance to h5, that can be annoying. And you can play h6 or block it with h5. If h6, white can actually open things up with f4, that starts to get a bit crazy. So h5 is the, the solid principled response. And now I put the knight in the middle. And here's one of the points of my move. If knight e7, then I go bishop g5. I don't have to worry about pawn to h6. And a knight or a bishop can settle on f6. So that's why Sokolov played knight e7 in order to meet bishop g5 with f6. So... Knight c3, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, and now bishop to e6, and I supported the knight with c4. Now Sokolov didn't want to live with that knight on d5, understandably, and he exchanged off and played bishop h6. So he's getting rid of his so-called bad bishop blocked in by that pawn, wants to exchange it off. Now, I played b4 to open up the queen side. Don't have to do that, but, well, it just felt right to me when I've got a bit of a space advantage with that pawn. If that's taken, then, of course, I can recapture the pawn with queen a4 check and queen takes b4. Bishop takes bishop, rook takes bishop. b6. Now, I wanted to improve the situation of my bishop, so I put it on h3. And he played knight h6. I think he was looking to perhaps advance with f5 at some stage. Queen d2 looks at the knight, so he can't castle because I'll just take. So that meant he had to castle by hand, walking the king over to g7. And now I didn't want to wait for him to, to go f5, so I played f4 myself. Now we've got a really tense middle game. Um, Things really start to happen over the next few moves. Um, if he plays f6 here, then, of course, my bishop will land on that wonderful square e6. Um, so he took. And I play rook takes, so now potentially some pressure on the f-file. Rook e8, queen b2 check seemed right to sort of claim this this important diagonal. If the king moves to the side, then I'll double on the f file and you know I've got some some interesting pressure there. So he played rook e5. Now I think he knew what he was doing here. Basically he's giving up a pawn. I exchanged on c5 and played rook takes c5. Of course if that's taken then queen takes e5 check. But his plan was to set while I'm on the on the queen side here, 
was to open up the king side with a counterattack g5. H takes g5, queen takes g5. So how do I react to this? He's also potentially got that queen's rook can come over to g8 as well. But actually, I'm okay. I play rook c2. Of course, queen takes g3 check can be met by rook g2, winning the queen. So king h7, rook g2. I thought it was time to pack the king side. Rook g8, queen f2. Very tense position. But I've basically consolidated on the king side. I've got an extra pawn. That's a nice pawn clump in the middle. Can't really be attacked. So now he fell back, queen e7. Now I was you know, a little bit concerned that he might be able to switch his rook to the g-file. I played rook f6. Um, my idea was to play queen f4, and then if that rook moves, of course, I'll be looking at d6 and also looking at h6. So he played king g7. Now my rook just had to go back, so I was a little bit unsure what to do. He played king h7. So we've repeated the position, I, I, but I didn't want to draw here. I'm a pawn up. You know, I should be able to at least put some pressure on him, go for more. So I played bishop f5 check. Didn't really want to give up that bishop, but I couldn't see any way to, to make progress. If he goes back with the king, then I've got rook h4, and I start to put pressure on the h-file. So he exchanged off. I think that's correct. Knight takes, rook takes. Rook takes rook, queen takes rook, check, king h6. Queen f4, check. So I want his king to go back and then potentially, you know, I can play on the h-file. But he blocked with rook g5. Now things get very sharp. There's a lot of calculation involved here. g4. H takes g4, rook takes g4. So this pin is potentially very interesting. I might be able to exchange off. He played king h5. So in such situations, you have to calculate really carefully. So the obvious one is what happens if I exchange everything off and go for the king and pawn endgame. I'm a pawn up. Surely this is going to win, but no. A little bit of calculation told me that here he can play f5. If he goes back with the king, he's lost. But if he plays f5, then this will lead to a draw and he gets a pawn back. So after king h5, I had to come back with the king. Uh, excuse me, come back with the rook. <laughs> rook g2. And he exchanged off. On g2. Now, if he goes for a king and pawn endgame here, then he loses. Let's just have a quick look. King f3. This is completely different because his king can't get in. And after f5, I don't need to take that off. In fact, even taking that off is, is good for me. But here I can play, let me see, simply king e3 or king g3 will also win because that will win the pawn. So he can't go for the king and pawn endgame. So he played queen c7. Now, queen and pawn endgames are notoriously difficult because there are often so many checks. Um, and particularly here, as my king doesn't have cover. But here is where things really got interesting. And, well, all these bong cloud systems with king marches put me in mind of this game. So watch what happened. Queen f5 check. Now, if his king marches forward, then I've got queen f king f3 and no defense to queen g4 mate. So his king had to go back. I gave a check. If he comes forward, then again king g3 is nasty because if... Well, he's running out of ideas here. If queen b7, I've got king f4 and again queen g5 with that kiss of death checkmate. And if queen d7, then I can exchange queens. Check. And that's a winning king and pawn endgame. So after queen f6 check, he had to go back, king h7. So if his king goes back, well, mine can come forward. And actually going forward 
actually prevents the check starting down here. So my king has cover from these central pawns. Now at the moment his queen is tied to the defence of that f pawn. And there could also be an idea for me to play e5 and create a pass pawn. So he played his king back to g8 to cover that pawn and that gives his queen potentially freedom to start checking my king. So I came forward, king h4, and again there could be a threat to play e5. He played queen b6, he's looking to get his queen down here. But I played king h5. Here we go, my king is staggering up the board. So if he plays his queen to e3 or g1, then I can play queen g5 check and force a queen exchange. So he played king f8, because in this position, I'm now threatening potentially to play king h6 and get in and checkmate. So he played king f8. Well, I marched up anyway, king h6, and well, I just, I want to go all the way here. And he's he's got to be very careful. If queen g1, then I've got queen d8 mate. I love, love the, the way that the king is a helper here. Um, and if, if queen check, then I can march up again. And, and, well, once again, queen d8 mate is threatened. And if queen h3 check, I've got queen h6 again exchanging queens. So he played king e8. And I march forward again. Here we go. It's the mad king march. Queen c5, he can't do much here. Now, if king g8 here, queen g1 is a bit tricky. So I thought I'd give, give the king some cover first. Queen g7. King e7. And again, I want to play king g8, but he checks. So I played queen g5 check first. Now, if f6, I'm going to come in with check and take a pawn. So he played his king back. And now it's safe for my king to get to g8. It's made it all the way to the other side of the board. I can't think I've done that in too many games. Not Certainly not with uh, queens on the board, actually. The whole idea is I want to attack f7. He played his queen back hasn't got anything better. I played queen h6, threatening a check. He played queen e7, and now queen g7 forces a tsugtang position. I was so proud of this. I love the symmetry. And basically, he's run out of moves. He hasn't got a sensible move. If he moves his king away, then I can take that pawn. If he moves the queen away, then I've got queen check. And I take the pawn. Zugzwang! All he could do was make a pawn move. So I just match that. Perfect symmetry. I made a little pawn move. He made another pawn move. And a4. Now. No more sensible moves. He's in the box. If he plays f6, then I just exchange off queens and I have a winning king and pawn endgame. And, yeah, if he moves the, the queen away, I can take this pawn. He played king d8. Now, I can take, but it's even better to check here. So, if he exchanges off, then that's a winning king and pawn in game. And if queen e8, well, that's what he played. Again, I love the symmetry. Then king g7, that was the final move of the game. Well, he, again, he's he's just run out of decent moves. If he exchanges queens, that's a winning pawn endgame. And if king here, then I'll take that one with check. And, of course, that, again, is a winning position for white. So there we go. That's, that's my Im immortal uh, bong cloud king march, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Uh, but I was very pleased with that game. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.